We're talking Miami Dolphins football on the Arlads Football Network, the Arlads Football YouTube channel. And we're going to talk to it. Let me just stop it there. We'll start uh, uh, to it. Uh, I don't want to butcher his last name. Uh, also, we're going to talk about Tyree Kill and to his replacement, Skylar Thompson. And so when we're talking Miami Dolphins football, Jason, Jason Sarney is with us from DolphinTalk.com. And Jason, thanks for doing this. Uh, sorry to be talking to you in this kind of a situation. Uh, I know how it feels uh, to to uh, be uh, it, barely into the season and to kind of realize, well, not even kind of, to realize the season's over. Uh, you can put a, a, a you know a happy face on all the fans, uh, and I'm not sure they are. But uh, this is what this is the bad side. This is the side that really sucks about football. In football, it's a game where injuries are part of it. Concussions are are very prevalent in the game, of course. Uh, and individuals have different body types, reactions. Uh, and in Tua's case, he's a quarterback that is gonna, you know try to do everything he can to win a game, to win a series, to win a play. And that was nothing more than Tua just being a warrior. Uh, what he does after this uh, is obviously his own call. I know a lot of people on social media and the media, he's got to do this, he's got to do that. He's got to do what's best for Tua Tonga-Vailoa and his family. The only people in that huddle is Tua and his family. So it's looking, and I'm hoping, and it should be the case that he's coming back, hopefully with week eight, week nine, after that IR is lifted. But the thing that I have to say from, uh, you know, being an objective sports football guy, you got to learn to slide. Got to learn to give yourself up. Yeah, no. You know, I hate using this expression, live to play another down. But yeah. uh, it's kudos to the quarterback for the grit that he shows. But here we are. Yeah. You know, so know. It, it's a tough topic. It, it, it's a topic for the last two years. We've talked about Tua with this, but uh, let's just hope that everything gets fixed. He's healthy and he returns to the Dolphins when he's able to. Yeah. I, I just, you know, I, I don't know how Dolphin fans were feeling. Maybe they were starting to get comfortable after last year uh, going injury free uh, for me uh, as a jet fan. It's like every, every, every play I'm watching Aaron Rodgers throw that it looks like he might be dealing with some sort of pressure. I'm like, you know, I'm like, throw the ball away, get the ball out of there. Don't take a hit. It's like, and, and I, and I can't believe that that's what I'm concentrating myself on as a fan. Uh, but it's today's, like you said, it's today's NFL. I mean, look at all the injuries already this year, quarterbacks after what we went through last year. And this is with all the protection that these guys get. And it's almost like, I can't believe it, but I'm like, actually, as much as I love the violence in the game and I'm, and I'm all for the violence everywhere else, but it's almost like, guys, you know, you, you, you just don't hit the quarterback. I mean, I know you want to win, but it hurts the league. And, uh, and, and, and there's nothing you can do about it. I, I, I get it, uh, but cause they're doing everything they can, but it just sucks. So and they've tried to protect the league. They've tried to protect the quarterback with all the rules. And, and you know, you look back into the eighties and the nineties, you weren't seeing oh. many scrambling quarterbacks getting hit. You were seeing them stay in the pocket and get pummeled. I mean, Dan Marino yeah. was not a scrambling quarterback. Please do not go reference his career rushing yard. But what the man did was stayed in the pocket. I mean, I would remember seeing interviews of like, you know, Lyle Alzado as a Raider would be like, we had him. And then he just disappeared. We had him. We had him. And like, he would get so mad. And that's what Danny was. He would just stick in the pocket and throw. But Tua, different, you know, and a lot of quarterbacks are going to use their legs. And, you know, you, you see quarterbacks who understand that you pick up the yard, you just got to get down. You either yeah. scamper out of bounds. Give yourself up, even if it's a yard short of the sticks, you're still going to play next week. You know, Peyton Manning, yep. Eli Manning, great at just not getting killed. Yes. Throw the ball away. Tom Brady was awesome at it. I mean, awesome. how many times you see Tom Brady just chuck the ball on the ground? Just look for another day. Look for another down. That, that's care. what it is. That's what it is. Yeah. And uh, yeah. So again, we, 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 we get it. Um, no use crying about it, I guess. Uh, as we turn the page to, like you said, uh, the hope, is that he will return this year if, in fact, he decides he wants to continue playing, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and that is a big difference between, hey, he's out for the year. There's no way he's coming back. So um, is it just – I know it's early, but is that really just all hope right now as, as, as you opened up with is that, all right, he's going to have to deal with it with his family. And as fans, we're just going to sit back 
and wait until he decides whether he wants to play again. And if he does, whether or not he can even come back to play this season. These are questions that I usually get a little nervous answering because I am not a doctor. I, I'm not part of the decision process clearly, but he's coming back. I, okay. I, I mean, just he's coming back. Um, right. Me guaranteeing the week or the game, I'm not going to be in that business. Uh, but I am going to say if I had to put a chip on it, I would say pre-week 10. Okay. So you're looking at if if you lift the, the IR designated games, which is four, you add in a bye week, it takes you to that Arizona Cardinals home game. Makes a heck of a lot of sense. I mean, it's the Dolphins fan weekend that weekend. It makes no difference. No one's going to, you know, rush a quarterback back for that. But it, it, with the way that the dominoes will fall, it will be a packed, loaded, fan frenzy house potentially for the return of Tua Tonga by Lois. So that is a great date to circle in very light pencil. Okay. And then once the doctors say you're okay, I mean, this is a man who, and I'm kind of giving a little bit of paraphrasing detail, you know, he kind of didn't give the exact details to doctors last year, wanting to get off on the field, wanting to get back to it. I'm fine. I'm okay. He's a warrior. You know, he's a tough man. And to, for better or for worse, He's going to put himself back on that field unless the doctor says, I'm not going to show you. And that's not going to happen. Yeah, it's, it's, it, and I think that is important to note because I think some fans might look at Tua in a completely different light. Uh, same way I believe that, that fans that don't know Deshaun Watson, and I've talked about him and backed him up uh, many times, not because of the obvious things that he's done in his past, but because of the fact that just like Tua, he's a warrior. And he's played with broken bones uh, to win football games and he'll do whatever it takes. And that's what you'll love about these guys. And that's why I think it's important uh, to let the fans know, the viewers know just, you know, what two is about. And because uh, some will complain and say, oh, I, you know, he's too, he's too soft. And no, he's not. It, the fact that he's too, uh, he's got too much heart. That's the problem. That's is a that, very big distinction. I mean, yes. soft from a body builder standpoint, from the ability to take a hit, I, I can understand that. But here, mentally, in terms of what this guy would do, if someone says there is the end zone, you just have to go through that barbed wire lit on fire, he'll say, yeah. do I have to slide? He'll dive right through it. He's not, yeah. not tough. He's not soft. He's got to save himself from himself. And that, that's a compliment, I guess. Absolutely. All right. So let's move on to this week. Skyler uh, is taking over. And uh, I think the Dolphins are about a five-point underdog around there, give or take. Um, I actually, uh, uh, you know, I, I, I kind of like him in that sense, you know, backs against the wall, the backup plays, usually when the backup quarterback comes in that first game, there's always that jolt. The team rallies around the backup, uh, and Seattle's not a very good home favorite team anyway. So I could see this being a very tough football game up in Seattle. Talk a little bit about the confidence that uh, you believe the team has or, 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 or may not have in Skylar Thompson. Confidence is a tricky word. You know, uh, listen, going back to Skyler, you know, he didn't play a snap last year because he was the third stringer. Mike White was the backup, so he didn't see action at all last year. His rookie year, he did a couple of things that you could say was admirable, going, taking the team up into a playoff game against Buffalo and keeping him in it, you know. So he's been in that tough environment. But, you know, he's had eight games, two starts to show what he is fully capable of and Love the man, love the great kid. You know, you get what you pay for. He's a seventh round backup quarterback going to the 12th man up in Seattle, which is a very notoriously loud place to play. So a new quarterback, things like audibling, getting up to the line on third and down. I have a stat that I pulled. Uh, it's early in the season, Greg, but, you know, I love looking at the opponents, how they rank in the NFL on certain metrics that you can't make it. I see. Seahawks lead the NFL currently with 50% of their defensive drives. They're three and out. Wow. So half the time, yeah, yeah, it scares the bejesus out of me. If you're a Dolphin team going 2,700 miles, longest <laughs> yeah. flight in the lower 48 states, Miami to Seattle, and uh, you, you're taking Skyler with you, and this could be an – I'm not rooting for it, but it could be an ugly game really quick, you know? Three and out stop, DK Metcalf, 60-yard touchdown. Interception, Zach Charbonnet punches it in, 14 nothing. I'm not rooting for this, sure. but this is th these are our fears that Dolphin fans should be going into this game with. The Seahawks have 
a, a, a fine secondary with Pro Bowl representation each of the last three years from certain players. Uh, Julian Love, um, De- Devin Witherspoon from last year made a Pro Bowl. You know, yeah. you got Hawks on the Seahawks who could pick off the best of the quarterbacks in the league. And you got a guy in Skylar Thompson who hopefully will be going into this game with a heavy run, short pass set up and scheme by – the genius that is Mike McDaniel. This is the game that he needs to be a genius. You know, no no poker player should show off if they have 50,000 chips versus 1,000 chips and they're winning every hand. That's Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddell with Mike McDaniel. I love Mike McDaniel, but to call him a genius with those two guys when everything is running smoothly, fine. Yeah. This is the game. That's right. Where genius needs to come out. And, and I'm, I'm hoping that it does. That yeah, it's a nice matchup. Happen. It's a nice matchup of two of the young, not even though McDonald's uh, a young coach, they're both still young and, and, you know, one on one side, one on the other. And uh, so this is a nice little matchup of uh, two coaches that look like they're going to be around a long time. and going to have a lot of success. Uh, what about uh, the matchup itself, uh, especially injury wise? Uh, how's the team obviously out, outside the quarterback position? How's Mostert? Uh, how's everybody else? This is the day where that first injury report, of course, comes out. Uh, it's a day that the Dolphin fans usually get very nervous about recently. You know, you see a name on the report. Is it veteran rest like Raheem Mostert does sometimes? But he was out last week. Uh, you know, you got rookie scratches who, who are not playing wide receiver Malik Washington. You know, the Dolphins are very thin in certain areas and have these injuries to deal with. So I'm looking forward to but very nervous to see that first Wednesday injury report. So I expect to probably see most start on it. Okay. HN was on the report last week but played played phenomenal. So Wednesday's report is something to kind of circle and say, all right, let's see what happens on the Friday report. Let's see what's so similar. Uh and of course you have Teron Armstead who's got the shoulder. So that's a big, big, big problem. Um he's listed as day to day, but he Went out against Buffalo, came back in the game, went back out. So that's that's a kind of a red siren in my mind saying, oh, okay, might be a little worse than initially thought. And Teron Armstead is a veteran who has never played a full 16 or 17 game slate. Even when the league was at 16 games, he never played a full run. So you got worry, you got concern, and I, and – this is a game Jeff Wilson was banged up, but he was seemed to be okay. I don't know how he's going to show up on the report in a couple of hours, but whether it's up and needing to run or needing to score via the run, the Dolphins have to run 25 plus times for them to have yeah. a chance. Yeah. And, and, and I know obviously if Wilson or Mostert weren't able to play, then maybe we see extended action from Jalen Wright. So Wright's a needed body this weekend. Uh, he was a, an underperforming guy against the Bills. I mean, I don't think he averaged a yard to carry, unfortunately. But, you know, this is one of those games where nothing silences a crowd more than oh, continual yeah. first downs via the run by a visitor, you know? And I, I bring that sound noise up, and I want things to happen via the run for the Dolphins to take things away from the intangible of crowd noise, of audible, uh, of changing up, your hot reads or making a quick mistake on a quick pass because you had to switch a play out, but oh, yeah. that defender knew it. He just knew what you're about. So just to be able to say, all right, we're going to run straight and have it. the ability to do so. I mean, the Dolphins yeah. have had teams in the past that were able to do that. Uh, not really recently. And they are a better pa- uh, run blocking offensive line than pass blocking. So that is something to kind of hang your hat on, I guess. All right. Now, Let's wrap up. I have to tell, talk to you, of course, uh, bring up the Tyreek Hill situation. And, um, you know, what I was thinking of, I know, I know a lot of people uh, after it happened and, and, and some people were really surprised that he had such a big game that week one. And then the more I thought about it, especially after the, team, the way the team played in a short week on Thursday, the more I thought about it, I was like, you know, I, 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 I guess I'm not surprised that maybe he had a, a good game and that, it just it wasn't a distraction because it, it happened so soon. But on a short week, I do wonder from an outside perspective, I do wonder whether or not that was a distraction going into the game on Thursday because Tyreek was all over the new, you know, interviews all over the place, short week. Um, and the Dolphins did not play well on Thursday, even when Tua was out there. 
So do you agree with that, uh, that maybe there was a little bit of a distraction? And uh, and if so, uh, do you think that that's uh, now in the past and you think that they're going to be okay moving forward? I'll start backwards. They're going to be okay from the Tyreek incident moving forward. Obviously, there'll be a little bit of that crumbs of trickle from what happens and in, in the fallout. But yeah, they were distracted initially. I mean, they started out down 14 zip at home. You know, Tyreek Hill has always played extremely well on week one games. Even when he was a rookie, the only pass he caught was a touchdown. You know, he does business week one as per usual. The fact that it was such a, you know, the way that it was handled by Miami-Dade police was wrong, was off. There was too much aggression. At that same time, yeah, you could say that Tyreek might have said one or two things or done one or two things that maybe he should have scaled down. Fine. But what happened to Calais Campbell after that, I think, is what made it the non-distraction and it became a rallying cry. Hmm. Because, I mean, look, uh, Calais Campbell is a Walter Payton man. Oh, yes. Yes. I mean, if you're talking about going to the wrong guy to put under wrap or, or arrest or in custody, you got the wrong dude. <laughs> and to me, that was when it was like, all right, we're going to be okay. We're going to make this a rap. We, the dolphins are going to make this a rallying cry. And once they got into the locker room, I can only imagine that, that, that Tyreek was ready to explode on the field. Okay. And we saw that eventually. And, you know, this is one of those things that if they did, have a longer week you make a great point Greg because the exhaustion the hangover of that was Monday Tuesday Wednesday oh you got practice you got Buffalo yeah okay so I'm not going to say that if the Tyreek incident didn't happen or if it happened in the game against Buffalo was Sunday we're not talking massive scoring difference with everything that unraveled but yes it was a carryover distraction I'd be shocked if it wasn't there's no way to really quantify that yeah sure. but 14 zip down at home distraction they ended up coming back on an emotional win they didn't play great fantastic there's a hangover after that it has to be again from the outside perspective so people that aren't with the dolphins every day they don't cover the doll aren't fans of the dolphins uh there might be some people that are like i mean come on man, this tyree kill guy i mean every time we're hearing about him this is something's going on i mean you know he's just one of these troubled guys uh, but then it's a matter really, it's not, it's not about, and I've learned this over the years, what the outside people think. It's about what do they think about in that locker room? What do the teammates think about them? Uh, whether they're right or wrong, whatever outside opinions are, it doesn't matter. It matters what goes on in that locker room, in that house, the Miami Dolphin house. Uh, it seems to me like they're, 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 they're a together group. Again, it appears to me, is that the case? Oh, listen, they're a tight-knit group, absolutely. I mean, last year, of course, you know, there were a couple uh, factions. You know, we love this defensive coordinator. We hate this defensive coordinator. Things are great. Things are not. Ultimately, it's a fun-loving group. Tyreek is, you know, he's the king. He's the jester. He's the best friend. Everyone loves him in that organization. If not, wouldn't have done the extension, you know? I mean, yes, they, they, they literally had the chance to yeah. say, Enough. how much more time do we have with this <laughs> yeah. guy? Yeah. We're, 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 we're tripling down here. Yeah. You know, he, he's a captain. He is a guy that, look, I, I've had the honor of, of doing an interview with Tyree a couple of years ago through his foundation. I've seen events that he's put on. His heart's in it. He, he is a, ultimately, you know, he's a good dude. And as we've seen in a lot of sports, a lot of different players and teams, people make mistakes. It's yeah. not necessarily the mistake you make. It's what you do after, you know, and you can look at a number of different teams and, and level the egregiousness of what people have done or what they've been, you know, he'll be all right. Yeah. Yeah. That's the thing. Uh, Cause uh, there are a lot of troubled uh, players. Uh, you could say what you want about how many kids he has uh, and all that, but uh, they, they grew up a, a, like, especially just being a football player, period. You grow up a completely different way than the way we grow, the, we, the way we grew up. Uh, throw in all the fame, throw in uh, everything else. And you can't judge someone in that respect. You can say, you can look down and say, 
I wouldn't do that if I was Sam. Or that's kind of weird. Or isn't that irresponsible? Um, but again, until you live in the person's shoes, uh, it's kind of hard. And, and, and I'll say this. I think there's a big difference in my mind between Rasheed Rice and Tyree Kill. Um, one guy nearly killed, I don't know, a handful of people. Uh, another guy, I think the worst I've heard is, you know, he's had some domestic issues. Is that, is that on him? Maybe it is. Is that a good thing? Probably not. Um, but I do think there's, there, there's a line you have to draw between and a distinction about, you know, giving a guy his due because of what you just said, that there's a lot of other good about him that maybe people don't know. And that is important. If he's, if he's not a leader, if he's not a jester, if he's not a guy that people rally around, well, then he's probably not getting that contract. Matter of fact, I know he's getting that contract. You know, Correct. getting rid of him, no matter how many touchdowns he scores. But he brings all that other good stuff to the table, and that's the important thing that I think we uh, we, we need to keep in mind. 100%. I mean, you, you list the pros, you list the cons. The pros outweigh them for Tyree, 1,000%. Jason, I appreciate you taking the time to talk to us today, and I look forward to doing this again, hopefully uh, better times when we talk, uh, and hopefully for Dolphin fans, too, it will be okay uh, if he does decide to play, sounds like he will, and uh, that he stays out of uh, the concussion uh, situation. It's, it's just a very uh, delicate thing that um, I, just, I, I just feel really bad for these guys. I really do, that they have to go through this. Uh, and that's why they get paid a lot of money, by the way, when we think about how much money they make. I'm the first guy to say that every single cent of NFL contracts should be guaranteed. These are individuals who spend 90 to 100% of their life before signing that contract to be in the ability to sign the contract for, at best, 10 years of earning potential. And then memories and the rest of your life. They deserve every cent. Yeah. And I hope Tua gets okay. I hope anyone who gets hurt gets back as soon as possible and their careers and lives aren't detrimented horribly. Appreciate it, Jason. We'll talk to you again, again real soon. Take care.